Hey guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. I'm a solutions architect with Stratus Grid, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, I wanted to provide a relatively quick tip that'll help to enhance your development workflow as a Rust developer. And this should work cross-platform, regardless of whether you're running on the Windows 11 platform, like I am locally here, or on Mac OS or Linux as well. What we're going to be talking about is how you can actually run the Rust tool chain inside of an isolated container file system so that you prevent any conflicts between the Rust tool chain that you have installed locally on your development system and the version of the Rust tool chain that you need for a specific project. So what we're going to do is rather than installing Rust locally, we're actually going to just run it inside of a container. Normally, if you go out to the Rust website and you go to get started here, they're going to talk to you about how to install the Rust tool chain locally. There's a little script here that you can find over on the official rep website rustup.rs as well. This is basically just a one line script that will install the Rust tool chain on your system. However, in certain cases, you might need a specific version of the Rust tool chain. Maybe you want to run automated software tests against older versions of the Rust tool chain, or maybe there's a particular library that you're using, for example, Rocket over here, and they actually suggest in the documentation that you use the nightly channel, which is kind of that cutting edge daily release of the Rust tool chain that'll give you access to cutting edge features, but also potentially cause breakages in the compilation process for your application. So if you do need a specific version or a specific release of the Rust tool chain, then using this containerized technique is actually going to allow you to accomplish that without having to switch back and forth between different versions of the Rust tool chain on your development system. So what we're going to be doing is actually using the official container image over on the Docker hub. So this is over at hub.docker.com. And then we need a Docker environment locally on our development workstation in order to spin up one of these Rust container images. And that's where the Docker desktop utility comes into play. So Docker actually develops this thing called the Docker desktop application. It's really the easiest way to get a local container development environment set up, regardless of whether you're on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. You can see there's downloads available for all these different platforms here. So you'll want to download and install Docker Desktop because that'll give you a really easy access to a Docker containerized environment so that you can just use the Docker CLI to spin up new containers and then any other types of container tooling to manage and inspect and monitor those containers that you have running locally. Now, the other cross-platform tool that we're going to need is Microsoft Visual Studio Code. And this is a cross-platform editor that allows you to very efficiently build software regardless of what language you're building in. But in this particular case, we're going to be using VS Code to build Rust applications. And one of the great features that I love about Microsoft Visual Studio Code is the support for an extension called the Dev Containers extension. So if we search for the marketplace for VS code here and head out here there's actually an extension called the dev containers extension and this is going to allow us to connect our local editor into the context of one of these isolated containers so that we can do all of our rust compilation and testing inside of that isolated container file system without impacting any tool chains or stepping on the toes of other software that we have installed on our local development system so that way we can just spin up a container we can connect to it we can develop our software inside of that container we can build test and all that fun stuff and then we can destroy that container when we're done with it and we haven't made any permanent changes to our development workstation that could cause potential conflicts so this dev containers extension is really nice plus we can actually install the rust analyzer extension which is the extension that you'll generally want to install if you're a Rust developer because it gives you access to a lot of advanced language features. It has a language server in there, so it does linting, and it gives you recommendations on how to improve your code almost in near real time. And so this is a really great extension that we can install into a container. So make sure that you install Docker Desktop, install Visual Studio Code, install the Dev Containers extension for VS Code, and then we can actually go ahead and spin up a containerized environment, again, using the official Rust image over on the Docker Hub. 
So we're going to spin up a container using this base image, and then we'll connect to it from our Microsoft Visual Studio Code environment. So the first thing I'm going to do is to spin up a shell here. So I'm using Windows Terminal, but again, on Mac OS, you might be using iTerm2. On Linux, you might use Tabby or Xterm or some terminal emulator like that. But because I have Docker Desktop installed, I can just do any Docker command at the terminal here. So I can create new containers, I can destroy containers, I can stop and start containers, I can update their configurations and all that fun stuff. So what I'm gonna do for starters here is just say Docker run interactive, and then we'll say TTY as well, and then we'll say Rust. Now there's another parameter that I wanna specify here to make sure that if this container ever exits, that it will automatically restart. So if I, let's say, reboot my computer, for example, that's going to cause these containers to stop, and I wanna automatically restart my dev container. So I'll say dash dash restart equals always, and this parameter will help to ensure that my Rust development container automatically starts back up as soon as I reboot my system. So what this is going to do is it's going to launch a new Rust container. It's going to give me an interactive shell right here, just running bash. But as you can see, if I do Rust C dash dash version, or if I do cargo dash dash version, you can actually see that I've got the Rust toolchain installed and I didn't have to install it. I'm just using the base container image that has the Rust toolchain pre-installed. One of the other great things here is that you can actually select from these Docker tags right here. So these image tags allow me to select a specific version of the tool chain. So let's say maybe I wanted to run 1.63, right? Well, I could use one of these tags here that's tagged with 1.63 to get that specific version of the Rust tool chain. So if I need to go back and run some automated tests on older versions of the Rust tool chain for whatever reason, just to make sure that the developer experience is consistent, across different versions of the Rust tool chain. If I'm maybe building a huge open source project with lots and lots of different contributors that may have different system configurations, and I just want to test that those different configurations are going to be consistently able to build my open source software project, then I can go back and very easily grab these historical versions of the tool chain, test compilation, and make sure that I get the expected output. But I'm just going to be using the latest tag. Also, I am running, I think, a slightly older version here. So one other thing that you might might want to do is actually specify the dash dash pull equals always parameter. And this will make sure that every time that you launch a new development container, it's going to tell the Docker engine to go out and look for the latest version of that container. And as you can see, there is actually a 1.74 version that I simply had not downloaded yet. So right now it's going to go ahead and download the latest version of the Rust tool chain and make sure that I have that cached on my local development system before it actually runs the new container. So this time, if I do cargo version, you can see I've, I've very easily upgraded from 1.73 that I had cached locally and now I've just downloaded or pulled the latest version of the Rust tool chain in that container image which is 1.74. Same thing for the Rust compiler, Rust C, I've got 1.74 right here. So now let's say we want to start building a software project using this version of the Rust tool chain. Well, since we have this container running, all I need to do is go into Microsoft Visual Studio Code and then use that dev containers extension to connect to this running container. And then any code that I write and save to the local file system is going to be inside of that container's isolated file system and completely separate from my local development workstation. Now, if you want to detach your shell here, you can actually just do control P, control Q. That'll detach your shell. But if you run a Docker PS command here, you can actually see that that container is still up and running. It has an automated name here that it was assigned when it started up called Boring Buck. So I'm gonna connect to this Boring Buck container from my VS Code environment. Let's head over to VS Code. And if I go to the extensions marketplace here and just search for dev containers, I should already have it installed on my workstation here. But if you don't, feel free to install that extension. And then we are going to use this to connect to that container. So hit F1 or Control Shift P, or if you're on Mac OS, do Command Shift P to open up the command palette here. And then we're gonna be searching for this command in the command palette called dev containers attach to running container. And then it'll give us a list of containers here. And of course, I already know that Boring Buck is the container that I want to run or connect to. So I'll choose that. And then that'll connect to the container. Now I had previously opened up a 
workspace called sample app, which doesn't exist. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a disconnect from there really quick. And that's going to close the workspace. So if you hit F1 and then say workspace, you can actually do a close workspace. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. So close workspace. I can't find exactly where that command is, but uh, there is a command here to basically close the workspace, but stay connected to the container. So once again, if I do Rust C version down here in the integrated terminal, you can see that I've got 1.74 of the Rust tool chain. So now what I can do is just say cargo new my cool app. That'll go ahead and scaffold out a new project. And then what I can do is say, I want to open a folder inside of the containers file system. And of course, I want to open the My Cool App folder, which is the new project that I just scaffolded out with the Cargo CLI tool. So now I can just go into source main and I can say, hello from Stratus Grid, please fill out our contact form. All right, so now that I've made some changes to my application, I can just hit control tilde to come back down to the integrated terminal here. And typically as a Rust developer, you would say cargo run, and that will compile and execute your project here. So as you can see, we've got this customized app here. So now I could go ahead and just delete that container called boring buck from my system. And my entire project would get cleaned up. The Rust tool chain, we get cleaned up as well because that container no longer exists. And I haven't had to actually install or tweak the configuration of the Rust tool chain on my local development system. So again, you as a Rust developer can use this technique, again, regardless of Mac OS, Windows, or Linux, to create a container, run a specific version of the Rust tool chain, do your software development or testing work inside of that container from a graphical editor that you're actually running on your host system. And that helps to keep everything nice and tidy and clean and separate across all the different projects that you are working on. If you like to engage with Stratus Grid on a project, feel free to go to our website at stratusgrid.com, fill out our contact form, and we'll be in touch with you. But until then, we'll see you in the next video. Take care.